Hi, I'm Chuck Dorset for Weaver Leather Supply. How about a video just for us costumers who have not started out in leather craft? There are so many possibilities. We're going to go with a simple, clean, classic pair of arm guards, and we're going to start from scratch. The best part here, these will work with just about any costume, any era. All right, so anything I use in this video, weaverleathersupply.com or check below. We've got links there. I'm going to take you straight to the website. Also, if you want to know when our videos release, just click your notifications. You'll know exactly when these come out. So let's step over to our pattern table, take a look at a very simple pattern. This is going to look like a complicated pattern. It really isn't. We've got easy dimensions everywhere, but the bigger point, we can absolutely make our own patterns. We've got a digital pick. We'll look at that shortly, but let's look at what we're doing first, okay? So we're going to make a pair of bracers. Well, first thing we need, some measurements. Let's take a simple tape measure, and I'm going to measure roughly in this area around my wrist, and I'm going to add a half inch to that. Now, if we've got thicker costume like a doublet, we may need to add a little bit more, but I want that comfortable when we lace this up. So right here for me, I'm seven inches comfortable. So seven and a half, yeah, there we go, seven and a half across the bottom of our bracer. Let's come up about four and a half inches and measure there. For me, I'm eight inches, so across the top, eight and a half inches. Right here, four and a half top to bottom. To me, five seems a little too long, four a little too short. It's our own design. Let's make it how we want to. That's, a, that's exactly right. Now, the biggest point or the biggest tip I can offer when we're making patterns, let's always work from a center line out. That makes sure everything is symmetrical. Okay, so let's step over to our digital pick. There's our eight and a half, seven and a half, and then our height, four and a half tall. Now we've got our eyelet holes along the outside edges and the top and bottom, we've got our marks for our spots. Those are all three eighths of an inch in from the edge, working from a center line. On our top row of spots, I'm gonna give those a one and a quarter inch spread, working again from our center line. On our lower set, we're gonna come down to one and an eighth inch, make that just a little bit more proportional. So again, not a difficult pattern. All right, let's step over to our main table, cut some leather. We're going to use a natural veg tan. This allows us to add our own dye color. We can antique, top coat, wet form, stamp tool. It's one of my favorite leathers to work with. Weight wise, we're going to go with a four to five ounce. That's about a sixteenth of an inch, but to me, that's a good pouch weight. Now, it's not an industry term by any means, but I like the lighter weights, and in fact, this makes a great wet formed scabbard. We've got a good video on that. All right, so let's open this up. This cut of leather is called a single shoulder. It's one of my favorite. I use these in most of our videos, but for us crafters, it's a good buy. It's affordable. It's a good size piece of leather. Best part, good quality. Notice how tight the flesh side is on this piece of leather. We've been buying these from the same tannery since day one. So let's start here with a pattern. This is just poster board. We can find this just about anywhere. But as we progress, let's step up to our pattern sheeting. This is easy to cut, easy to mark, but durable. Makes a great pattern. Now, we're going to draw these in with pen. That's not the best route. An all is better. But to see it on camera and for me to easily see it, I want to use a pen. But we've got two things going for us here. Well, first off, I'd like to cut inside that ink line, just a hair. That's going to give me more accurate size. But secondly, we're going to use what's called an edger. So we most likely will cut off any ink we have. Now, right here, I've already got a straight edge cut in this leather from a pre previous project. Yeah, I use these a lot. So if we don't have that, let's go ahead and take a straight edge, get a good line going. Now, let's butt our pattern right up against that edge, and I want to come in from this edge just a little bit. It's simply the edge of the leather. Who knows what we've got over there? But if we come in just a hair, and let's just lightly mark these. Good. Now the camera can see that, and so can I. When we're cutting our leather, I have always used a simple box cutter. The blades are inexpensive, sharp, easy to replace. Best part, though, I've got a retractable blade. I've gotten in the habit of just closing my blade when I set this down. I never have an open blade on my work table. All right, let's start here. We're gonna go with a square, one of the most useful tools in our shop. Now, I typically say when we're starting a project, 
let's go with a new blade or sharp blade first. So right here, let's lay this in just inside my ink line and let's just make a simple cut. There we go. Same here. Now I'm not going to start this cut yet. Let's cut this piece out, then we'll work over. We're not cutting into this piece. And how easy is that to cut leather? And look how clean our cut is. Now one thing, and we're going to have to use me as a bad example here. Overcuts. We've got to watch these. Right there, I simply went too far. That's going to give me a problem on my next project. I'm going to waste that leather. Okay, let's cut this second out. Now when we cut a, a thinner piece, let's get our knife well into that. Then let's push our finger over and hold that down. That'll keep this piece or our project from fading in one direction or another. But right there, we've got two beautiful cuts. Good. Let's step over to our punch table. Here's an easy trick that's going to keep us from making a mistake. So on our edge, we're going to punch holes for our lace. Makes perfect sense. But across here, we're going to add spots. We don't want to punch holes here. So let's mark our pattern. I'm going to take a red marker where I just want to mark for a hole and not punch. Let's circle those in red. Now let's come back with a black marker and let's mark the holes where we're going to punch a hole in black. Good, we've got that. Now our pattern is ready to mark onto our leather. So let's lay this in and with our awl, let's make sure we're as square as we can be. Good. Now let's mark our pattern. Good. Our pattern's marked. Okay, let's punch some holes. We've got a revolving punch or a rotary punch. Same thing. Multiple size tubes for multiple size holes. This is the best deal on the market. It's a solid tool, replaceable tubes. Now, we're going to add an eyelet. We'll go further into detail on these. But we need to punch a hole that's going to be the size of that throat. And I want that a little bit snug. So right here, if we come up to about the fourth hole on our rotary punch or revolving punch, let's try one. There we go. Okay, let's slide this through. Good. It's a little bit snug in there. That's what we're looking for. So I'm going to punch four holes on both sides, both pieces. Good. There we are. Now one more good point here. With a revolving punch, great way to punch holes. But if we need a hole deeper in our pattern or our panel, we're just not going to get there. We need to jump over to a dry punch. And we've got these in multiple sizes. This is a great tool if we need it. Okay, back to our main table. We're going to use three tools here. Now we don't have to use any of these. We can go with this just like it is. But each one is going to take our leather work up another step. Let's start right here with a round corner knife or simply a corner knife. That's going to punch round corners on our project. Makes it very easy. Now, if we don't have one of these, what we can do with our knife, we can simply clip our corners, all four corners, because what we don't want is we don't want this to pinch on our wrist or a little bit higher. Now, that will look fine, but we can cut a round corner simply with a knife by just making a series of very small cuts. And there we are. We've actually got a pretty good round corner. Okay, so let's start right here with our corner knife, 15 millimeter, and I'm going to drop this in on all four corners, both pieces. And our last one, even that small detail makes that look very finished, very professional. Next up, we're going to go with a groover. Now, the primary job here is to literally cut a groove parallel to our edge so we can hand sew this. We'll sink our chisel down into that line and the thread can sink down into that groove. But even if I'm not sewing, I use this on every edge. So right there, let's just say that's a belt. Doesn't look bad. But then when we groove and edge that, all the difference in the world. So on our groover, I typically set this at an eighth of an inch. There's our guide arm. So I'm going to butt the guide arm against the edge of my leather. I'm going to lift this up 
say about 40, maybe 45 degrees, and I'm going to give it just a little bit of counterclockwise pressure. Yeah, there we go. Easy enough. Now let's take our time going around a corner. These can be a little bit tough. And there we are. And good with that. Even that detail makes a good difference in that. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing over here. And there we are. We've got a groove on both pieces. Now, an edger or a bevel. If you think of bevel glass, that's exactly what this is going to do. It's going to remove that hard edge. This is a number one edger. This is good for a four to five ounce, maybe a five to six ounce leather. So on this, I'm going to sink the tool on the edge. I'm going to come up about 45 and maybe out about 45. And there we go. It's as easy as that. Now on our corners, a little bit tougher. Let's just do our best to work around our corner. And we've got that. Okay, already, that looks better. A nice addition to this. Now, we're going to do our back as well because we're going to wet our edge and we're going to slick that. It's going to make it glossy. It's going to give it a good feel. But on our flesh side, this will not edge nearly as easily as our top grain, but let's just do the best we can. That's all that's needed here. And there we go. Okay, that one's ready. I'm going to do the same thing over here, edge front and back. Now, typically with a thicker leather, we're going to take off a little more leather off of the, the flesh side, but that will do for us. Okay, so let's reset here. We're going to see how easy it is to add dye to our leather. Adding dye to our leather doesn't have to be messy, expensive, or time-consuming, and it's so easy to do. But the one thing we're looking for, I want consistency. I don't want streaking. And the way we're going to dye, we get there without even trying. Now, there's a couple of ways we can add dye. Love the wool daubers. These are great for smaller projects. Or maybe say we're just going to add some dye to an edge. Larger projects, not so much, because it's hard to keep the streaking down. Our dressing sponges. These are great. That will hold a lot of dye. We can do a larger project, but with these, I like to cut them down, makes them go a little bit further. All right. So we're going to go with a pro dye light brown. That's the only dye I use. Now we use our light brown in most of our videos. I love the color, but we're going that route here because we're going to add an antique. That's going to be a good look. But with our pro dye, we have got some beautiful colors to choose from. In fact, right there, that's the dye. And then that's the dye with a top coat. We'll be adding a top coat. That's going to enrich in our dye color. So right here, let's go with just any kind of a small container. I've got all kinds of containers and all kinds of sizes, but we just need one large enough for our project. Now right there, I've got a hook. That's just made from cheap wire from any hardware store. And I want to have a rag close by. Simple cotton rag is fine. So let's put that through a hole. Now I'm going to drag this somewhat slowly through our die. Good. Now I want a rag here because if there's any die left, I just want to mop that off. But with the pro die, almost wicked in completely as it is. So let's do the other one the same way. Let's tap that against the edge, get some of that excess die off. And there we are. Look at that. Now, in all honesty, all we have to do is simply walk away. These are going to be beautiful. So let's give these about two hours dry time and we'll see how they come out. We've given these a little more than two hours dry time. How easy is that? We've got consistent dye. We barely even have dye on our gloves. Now for cleanup, I like to keep my dye in the original bottle. Cheap little funnel will help with that. Half a paper towel. We're ready to go again. All right, so we're going to step over to an antique. We'll talk about this, but it's one of my favorite techniques. So let's flip this over. Now we don't necessarily have to go this route, 
But what I don't want is this antique wrapping around the back. Looks terribly unfinished, very unprofessional. Now we don't need to cover the entire back if we're careful, but let's at least tape around the edges. And I'm just gonna use some simple painter's tape. Just about any tape will do. Now we've dropped in an edger on the back, so I do need to come in just a little bit. Okay, let's just trim off the excess. And that doesn't have to be a perfect cut. We just want to protect that back. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Dying, relatively clean. Didn't expect that, right? Well, now the, the antique's completely the opposite. This can be a mess, but we're going to do our best with it because I love the look. It's going to sink down into the natural blemishes and range marks on our leather. It's also going to sink down into that groove line. It's going to darken our leather a little bit, but it's going to make it look used and loved. Now we're going to go with a medium antique. That's going to take our color down just a little bit, not too much. Great thing about these, we've got a neutral antique. We can mix this with any one of our Angelus paint colors, get all kinds of possibilities for beautiful antiques. So with this, it's more like a paste. So let's get some out on a piece of our pattern sheeting. Okay, we've got that. Now, gloves, absolutely, because again, this can be a mess. Good, we've got that, so let's just take a simple cotton rag, that's all we need. I'm going to take some of our antique. Good. Now let's just start in one corner and work our way out. Okay, we've got some good antique across the face. Now let's take our dauber and let's get that work down into our groove line. And just in any spots we might have missed. Good, now let's just wipe this off. Good, we've got that. Now let's come over to our edge and let's just hit our edges. Well, those look good already. Let's clean that. Very nice. That looks good. Now it's going to lighten a little bit as it dries, but I'm going to do the same thing to this piece. Well, those look good. I love that color with the antique. So let's give these about 45 minutes dry time. I have to say, I think that's one of my favorite colors. Now, still a little bit flat, we're going to add a top coat. But before we do that, let's take our tape off. Very nice. We've got no antique wrapping around to the back. Now, one thing, this is a great tip and use me as a bad example because what we should do, let's punch our holes after we add our antique because that antique can sink down in those holes. Well, we didn't do too badly here, but if we ever have that issue, let's just take a piece of lace and we can run it through that hole. That'll knock that out. Okay, top coat. There are all kinds of top coats. I love the leather balm. It's going to give us a low gloss, but if you want a higher gloss, an oily finish, a waxy finish, all kinds of ways we can go here, but I love the leather balm. All right, so let's start with some fleece. This is the same material, say from sweatpants or sweatshirts or hoodies. I like this because it's going to take in a lot of the leather balm and we can do a much larger area. So let's get a little bit on our rag. Good. Now let's just very lightly work our way across. Let's go somewhat sparingly. And there we are. Okay, the one thing we don't want here is streaks and bubbles. Those will show up. So let's go very easy. That won't be a problem. Let's do the same thing to this piece. Good, and we've got that piece. Okay, let's give those a couple of minutes dry time. 
got a little dry time and these are ready to buff. So now I'm going to take just again, a simple cotton rag and let's buff this. Now it's going to go very flat. It always freaks me out, but let's just give it a minute. We'll get a nice gloss out of that. And hit our edges. There we go. Now that's starting to look good, isn't it? I'll do the same thing over here. Well, there we go. That looks good. Very nice. Now this is a little bit darker than this. It'll lighten up as it dries. Okay. So let's step over, add some spots. We add spots to most of our projects in our videos simply because I love these. They're inexpensive, they're easy to add, and they look good. And at Weaver, we've got some great spots. In fact, right here, that's an antique copper. That would look very good on the, on the brown with the antique, but one of my favorites always, antique nickel. We've even got diamonds, and these are pretty cool. We can absolutely use these, but what I like, how about we use these in conjunction with each other? There are all kinds of cool designs we can make. Offset, diamond plate, we could do circles. Again, we've got a big empty canvas here. We can do so much with our spots, but we're gonna go with a conical spot. Give these a good period look, okay? So let's start here. Now, if you're new to Leathercraft, all kinds of ways we can put these in, but the easiest way to go when you're new, we're gonna take a craft knife. Now, this has got the longer blade on it. When we get this, it's got a shorter blade, but let's change that out for the longer. Right here, I've just got a little pallet made with cardboard. I've taped five or six pieces together because we're gonna push through our leather and into this board, okay? Or into that pallet. So let's take our first spot. We've got our marks here. Now, this is just a nuance, but it's a good trick. So what I'm going to do, so we've got our mark. I'm gonna take our spot and I'm gonna straddle that mark as best I can. Okay, now I don't know if the camera can see that, but now I've got two marks. I know exactly where my tines need to be. So we're doing our tines up and down instead of left and right. When we've got something that we're going to bend, I'd prefer not to put my tines left and right because what will happen is we'll have a bend flat spot, bend flat spot. So let's just turn those right there and we've got our marks. Okay, with our palette and our craft, our art knife, Let's run through right on our marks. Now let's be careful. I don't want more slit than spot. So let's just work that through. Good. Now let's flip it around and let's come through from the other side. Yeah, there we go. Because what I'm trying to do is mimic the shape of that tine. So let's take that tine, push that through. And there we are. That sinks right down in there, nice and flush, very nice. Next step, let's turn this over, and I'm just gonna use my knife. Let's press down around those tines. Now, let's bend those inward. And last step, let's put this on our, on our marble. Now, I don't wanna hit this hard enough to ding it, but that's all we need, because now, those tines have actually circled in. I can't feel them. They're not going to snag or grab on anything. Okay, I'm going to put five across the top, the bottom, then I'm going to do the other. Well, there we are. We've got a good looking pair of arm guards. Those look nice. Now, for those of us new to Leathercraft, there's not a single thing we've done that's difficult. We've got one more step. Let's drop in our eyelets. That's a nice touch but those are just as easy as everything else. When we think of setting eyelets, we're probably thinking we need a machine, we need the right throat, the right anvil. Actually, not at all. All we need is a hand setter. So we're gonna go with a number eight eyelet. Now there are eyelets and there are grommets. Eyelets are typically one piece, that's a hole protector. A grommet is typically two. We've got the throat, we've got a washer. That protects the hole but it also strengthens the area around that hole. So let's go with an eyelet, simply for lace. That's gonna work for us. Let's come through from the face, push that through. Now with our anvil, I'm gonna sink that in the anvil. Let's make sure that seat's in there. And with our setter, I'm just gonna give this two medium shots. 
and there we are. We've got an eyelet. How easy is that? I'm going to do the same thing to the, both sides here, same on the other. Now, two shots doesn't do it. Don't hesitate to come back. Maybe give it just one more. We want that secure in that hole. Well, there we are. Okay, let's add some lace. We're done. We're going to go with one of my favorite types of lace. This is a Latigo lace, eighth inch, and I love the chocolate. In fact, I use it so much I'm almost out. But this is a very thick, very stiff lace. It's about as much as we can use going through the number eight. But the thing I want here, durability. So if we use this, it's going to soften up and it's going to feel like twine in no time. But let's get it on its way. So what I'm going to do is just run that through my hands. Let's drag on that. That's softening this up just a little bit. And we've got that started on the road to softening up. Now, the one trick when we're lacing arm guards, I always want to start at my wrist and work up. So whatever lace is outside of the knot, that's not going to hang in our hand. That can be very irritating. So let's start right here. What we're going to do, let's go through from the outside either side. Let's pull that through and equalize that distance out. Okay, now, our next, we're just going to come across and up one, and we're going to come from the inside out. Good. Now let's cross over, one up, and come from the outside in, and then from the inside out. So what happens is now our knot's going to be on the outside. It's a little easier to tie. Let's do the same thing to this side. And there we are. Now, we can trim some of this off, absolutely, but I wanted to make sure we had ample length. Well, there we go. That looks good. I'm going to do the same thing over here. And there we are. Those are laced, and they look good. Now, on both of these, I don't think I mentioned this, but I'm going to start with lace about 30 inches long. Let's just trim that off. We are ready to go. That's a good looking pair of arm guards. Not a single difficult step and look at our outcome. This is so typical of Leathercraft. Dive in, have a great time with it. I hope you have a great time making your arm guards and I hope they make a nice addition to your costume. Good luck with your projects. Mm -hmm.